Amen. All right. So Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the 39th verse through the 40th verse. This is our anchor and foundational scripture. It says this. Praise God. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Amen. In the Amplified Version, it says, and all of these, though they won divine approval by means of their faith, did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised. They did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised. Amen. Because God had us in mind. Once again, they did not receive the fulfillment of what is promised. Talking about the heroes of faith found in that 11th chapter. They did wonderful feats. They subdued kingdoms, shut the mouths of lions, praise God. But they didn't receive the fulfillment of what was promised. Why not? Because God had us in mind and had something better and greater in view for us so that they, these heroes of faith, should not come to perfection apart from us before we could join them. Amen. They didn't receive the fulfillment of what was promised, which is Jesus Christ. Praise God. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, and heaven, glory to God. So without us being perfected, without us receiving Jesus and being baptized in his spirit, praise God, and walking out the truths of this dispensation of grace, they could not receive. They can only prophesy about it. They can only see it from a future, from a distance, amen. They did not have the fullness of it. But beloved, you and I, we don't have that testimony. Glory to God. We have received the fullness of God's spirit. He's dwelling on the inside. Glory to God. Why are we able to receive it? And Caleb and Joshua and them only had a type of it, a figure of it. Beloved, because Jesus had not come yet. Amen. But because God has something greater and better for us in mind, amen, he gave us Christ. And because we have Christ, we have something better. Amen. Can you type in that box? Better. Amen. So now the word better has four meanings. We're going to give you those meanings right now. If your hands are free, politely type in the box. Better in the Greek language, it means stronger. It means mightier. It means greater and more excellent. Once again, stronger, mightier, greater, and more excellent. So, beloved, you have something stronger, you have something mightier, you have something greater, and you have something more excellent. Now, I know we look at scripture and we say, my God, I want it like that. I wish I had it like that. Praise God. I wish I had it like Sarah had it. I wish I had it like Samson had it. I wish I had it, praise God, like Joel had. I wish I can prophesy like Isaiah. But beloved, you got something better and greater than all of them when you receive Jesus. When you receive Jesus, you got something greater than Samuel, amen, Gideon, all of the Old Testament patriarchs. They were looking for what you have, amen. It's just a matter of understanding that will unlock your faith. Glory to God, because once your faith is unlocked, come on here, you can experience the greatness of God, huh? Understanding fuels your faith. Understanding empowers your faith. When you go to another level and a deeper depth of understanding, then the enemy loses his grip upon you. Because true revelation, according to the word of God, true revelation knowledge concerning the truth, it provides understanding. And when you get that understanding, it liberates your mind, liberates you from the clutches of hell. So, beloved, all we need is a deeper understanding 
of the thing that we already have to access the greatness of God. Amen. And this is what we are coming to do tonight. Amen. The purpose of the book of Hebrews is very important. The purpose is Paul is encouraging, inspiring, and exhorting these believers to keep their faith in Christ in spite of the harsh treatment, in spite of the persecutions, in spite of the tribulation, he was coming at a pivotal time in their life. They were about to give all the way up. They were about to cast in all of their chips and saying, forget it. There's nothing to this because the persecution is more than the promise. The persecution is greater than the promise. I'm going through more hell than I've ever experienced in my life. So guess what I'm going to do? I am going to turn around and go back to what I used to do. And God sent Paul to interrupt that thought process. Because going back, glory to God, is not an option. Amen. When God delivers you from sin, and when God delivers you from Satan, he does not expect for you to turn back around and go back to what you left. Scripture tells us in the gospel, if any man put his hands to the plow, glory to God, but he decides to look back, that man is not qualified fit for the kingdom of God. But beloved, we are persuaded of better things concerning you and salvation. Amen. Type in that box better. Better things are coming for you. Amen. And God is going to do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. So now, what do we need now? So Paul is going to lay out some things. He's going to lay out some things. But I want you to type in the comment box. We need instruction. We need instruction. There is a need for instruction. Glory to God. We need God to do something for us concerning our mind. Amen. And God is going to provide instruction. We need instruction. Put that in the box, please. We need instruction. Instruction is the whole training and education of individuals which relate to the cultivation of the mind and the cultivation of your morals. Once again, education is the whole training and excuse me, uh, instruction is the whole training and education of individuals, amen, which relate to the cultivation of the mind and the cultivation of the morals. Instruction cultivates and refines the soul. Amen. And God is coming to save our soul. Correct. So this is why he gives us his spirit because his spirit is the highest realm of intellect. His spirit is the mind of God, the intellect of God, the thought processes of God. And when we get baptized with the spirit of God, there's so much power in it. It frees our soul. Praise God from our own spirit and the spirit of the adversary. Now, the power has shifted back to us. And now we are able to think like God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're able, my God, to rationalize like God, contemplate like God, access the mind of God, the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, so that it can matriculate into our soul and regulate how we feel, regulate our appetites. Praise God. And now the soul is what God is really after. He wants to what? Save your soul. How does he do it? By baptizing you with his spirit. Amen. There is one baptism, but there are many refillings. And throughout the course of life, you find yourself needing a refilling. Amen. God can fill you again. And when God fills you again, my God, praise the Lord, the instruction is absolutely necessary. Amen. Type in the box. I need instruction. I need instruction right about now. Instruction cultivates the mind. 
Amen. This is what the enemy is after. If the enemy can get your mind, you got your life. Amen. But, uh, but true instruction cultivates the mind. And when the mind is cultivated, another word for cultivate is refined. So when the mind goes through a refining process, can somebody say amen? Guess what it does? It automatically deals with our morality, our ethics, our sense of right and wrong. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. That, that means that no matter what you're going through, you are able to discern what is good and what is evil. You're able to discern what God wants versus what you want. What does God want and what does Satan want me to do? Praise the Lord. You will always have that sense that I am obligated to do what is right. Why? Instruction, instruction, instruction. Instruction refines my mentality. And when my mind goes through that renovation process, praise God, when my mind goes through, I am transformed because my mind has been refined, renewed, and renovated. It's the most important thing about salvation right now is the instruction level. It's the instruction that really galvanizes and controls my growth. Amen. If I'm not getting instructed on a deeper level, a higher level, I cannot access the things that belong to the kingdom of God. I really don't know what is mine and what belongs to me. I can live beneath my privilege for years, even though I am a tongue talker, because I have not bought into the fact that instruction right now is the most important thing for the cultivation of my mind. I need a deeper level of instruction. I need a, a deeper level of this instruction. Can somebody say amen? All right. So we need instruction. Uh, King James Version, 2 Timothy, the third chapter, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished unto what, y'all? All good works. So the word of God is profitable. All scripture is is given by inspiration of God, and it is good for doctrine. The word, amen, the scripture is good for doctrine, for reproof. Reproof means that uh, the word of God can prove to you that what you're saying or thinking is sin, amen, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. The word of God is good for all of those things. Now, why do I need that? That the man of God, that the woman of God may be perfect. Glory to God. What is God after right here in this scripture? According to this scripture, God is after the perfection of the saints. The perfecting of the saints. Amen. That the saints of God may respond to any situation. Amen. That they are faced with like God would respond to it. Amen. Amen. Your situation right now, think about it and ask yourself a question. How would God respond to this situation? How would Jesus respond to the current situation that I am in? How would Jesus respond to that situation? How, would I, how am I responding to it? But beloved, how would Jesus respond to it? Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Now, the Amplified Bible says it like this. Every scripture is God breathed. Amen. God breathed every scripture and it is profitable for instruction, for reproof, which means conviction of sin. Come on. For correction of error and discipline in obedience. So this is what we need. It's profitable for instruction. That's what we need for reproof and conviction of sin. That's what we need for correction of error. That's what we need. And discipline in obedience. You are obedient, but now God is saying, I want you to become disciplined in your obedience. And for training in righteousness. Now, what is righteousness? Righteousness is holy living. So the scripture, amen, provides instruction about how to live holy. And, and we constantly need this instruction. Amen. Amen. Righteousness is also this conformity to the will of God in my thought, in my purpose and in my action. 
So I have to conform. I know I'm going to be transformed, but conform means that I must take my will and I must make my will conform to the will of God in my thoughts, in my purposes, and in my actions. Now, how many know that is a high standard right there? That our thoughts must be in perfect agreement to the will of God. Come on, I'm not getting no amens. Amen. My purpose, my intent, my motive, my reasons why must be in perfect alignment with the will of God. And my actions must be in perfect alignment to the will of God. Now, how am I going to access that? Instruction from the scriptures. When I am instructed, I, found, I find out how to conform to the will of God. Amen. If you understand that, give me that thumbs up in that box. Praise God. We are in need of instruction. Now, why is God sending instruction? So that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well fitted and fully equipped for every good work. God is looking for proficiency. Amen. Anybody out there ever heard of a, a proficiency exam? They want to see how proficient you are. Glory to God. They want to see how you respond, how much intelligence you have. Our responses right now, beloved, has to reflect the kingdom of God and his word. It has to reflect the kingdom of God and his word. God is looking for proficiency, not just being saved. Amen. I don't want to bust any bubbles tonight, but being saved is not enough. Being saved is not enough. It's the illustration and the model of your salvation. Amen. It's the illustration of what you have on the inside. It's the fruit bearing that you have. Praise God. So just being saved and speaking in tongue means nothing if the model, praise God, if the what illustration of my salvation is faulty, then nobody else wants to eat that fruit. Beloved, you are in the image of God. And you reflect the kingdom of God. So when people are talking about the kingdom of God, it comes without observation. You won't see it, praise God. Amen. But when they, he said the kingdom is in you. So when people have an interaction with you, an encounter with you, an experience with you, they are really approaching the kingdom of God. Now, my illustration of that kingdom, God said you have to be proficient in that. You cannot misrepresent me. And it takes instruction to know what God is really calling for in this last time that we are in. Can somebody say amen out there? Praise God. So what am I illustrating? You remember the parable of the fig tree? The fig tree, praise God, was called a hypocrite. That's the name that they gave to the fig tree. It had leaves on the outside. It had leaves. So when Jesus saw the leaves, people of God, he automatically thought, when I peel back the leaf, I should see the fruit. But when he approached the tree and peeled back the leaves, the figs were not there. So the, the leaves said, I got figs here. The outside said, I got something on the inside. Amen. So from that level of instruction, from that illustration, that model, kingdom, amen, Jesus approached the tree because he gave a kingdom illustration that I got something. So when he got to the tree, he was expecting something. But at the inspection, he pulled back the leaf and he didn't find what he was looking for, what he had an appetite for. So he did what to the tree, y'all? He cursed it. He cursed it. Why? Because it was a bad representation of the kingdom. It was a bad representation of the kingdom. Amen. So what is missing? Instruction. When, you, when we are instructed into the mindset of God, we will become fruitful. We will become fruitful. Praise the Lord, somebody. So God is saying, I am about to get rid of everything that is not producing 
the kingdom of God. Glory to God. Amen. But if we listen to instruction, God is going to spare us. Can somebody say glory to God? Amen. So we need instruction. There is a need for instruction. We need to cultivate our mind so that our morals can get back into place. All right. Amen. So with that in mind, follow me to the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter. And at the 10th verse, I'm going to start reading Matthew 13 and 10 and 11. Amen. It says this. And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he, excuse me, he answered, this is Jesus talking. And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. So the disciples asked the question and Jesus answered the question. Jesus put it like this. I got two classes. I got one class that has been given to and another class it has not been given to. I got one class that knows and then I have another class that does not know. I got one class that get it. Then I got another class that don't want to get it. Amen. So Jesus is talking to two classes in one setting. Amen. And he's teaching them about the kingdom of God. But he already knows this class gets it. This group of people get it. But this group of people, they don't get it because they really, really, really don't want to get it. Amen. Can I submit to you humbly as your friend, praise God, that ignorance is not in the kingdom of God. There is no darkness in him. There is no darkness in him. There is no ignorance of divine things in the spiritual realm. There's only sluggishness. Amen. We have to press our way. Glory to God. We got to press our way into that revelation. We got to labor. The Bible says to study, to show yourself approved. Amen. Unto God. Then it says this key word, a work man. Which means it's going to take work to access understanding. It's not just going to fall out the air. It's not going to fall out the air. Praise God. You have to work to get the understanding of the scripture. You have to labor back and forth trying to put this thing together mixed with prayer. Amen. It's a work. Can somebody read after me? It's a work. It's a work. It's a work. You have to labor to enter into a rest. You got to labor to enter into a rest. That rest happens when that light bulb goes off in your spirit. Oh, I get it now. I get it. This is why that happened when I did that. Now when you get the understanding, now God is saying you will not repeat that again because you understand the consequences of it. Now God said, now I got to give you wisdom so you can stay out of it. Come on, somebody. But I need instruction. I need to understand the will of the Lord. Can somebody say amen? So I got two classes. I got a class that gets it and a class that doesn't. Now I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to answer, which class are you in? Huh? Are you in the class that get it? Or are you in the class that's struggling to get it? Amen. What class are you in? Are you in the class where you can understand the mysteries of the kingdom? He said, it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Now, that word mystery, praise God, that word mystery, type that in the box. Mystery is the secret political and religious doctrines. Yes, there is a political machine in the spirit. We're going to get to that in a minute. The politics of the spiritual realm is different from Washington, D.C. The secret political and religious doctrines that one must be initiated and instructed into. So the mysteries of the kingdom can only come by way of instruction. I thank God for all of the preachers. I thank God for those who know how to hoop, as we call it, and sing and shout and dance and all of that. But the power of salvation can only be accessed and lived in according to the level of instruction. 
Glory to God. I'm about to praise God right now because I'm going to praise God. I'm going to preach. I'm going to holler. I'm going to scream. I'm going to shout. I'm going to dance. Anybody out there like that? You're going to give God glory. But after you give God the glory physically rolling on the floor, you know how we do in church. I must become a student. And I must place myself like the maniac of Gadara after his transformation. He became teachable. Glory to God. He became one who was sitting in the posture of learning. So after we get through it all we're doing in church, what is my posture? Am I really being taught or am I able to receive instruction? Huh? Amen. I used to play basketball. I remember we went to the camp. Amen. The fight in the line I camped down in Champaign, Illinois, and we was playing ball. We had all these coaches around and everything, and everybody walked around with a clipboard. And uh, they asked him, why y'all walking around with clipboards? And one of the coaches says, because we are evaluating every camper, every basketball player in this camp. And one of the things that was on the list, how fast is he? How high he can jump? Is he a good shooter? Can he dribble? Can he pass? But one thing that was on the list, praise God, that equalized everything. You can jump out the gym, you can dunk, you can shoot, you can pass, you can dribble, but are you coachable? Amen? Are you coachable? That was one of the things that they checked off. Are you coachable? Because talent without being coached is a waste of time. Are you able to receive the instruction? Because when you receive instruction from somebody that has experience and that knows the way, your game goes to the next level. Your performance goes to the next level. Glory to God. Can somebody say amen? You get better because the coach is giving you something that you did not have. And that's what? Information. IQ. Understanding. Wisdom. So now, coupled with your gift, Coupled with your talent, coupled with your anointing, when you, get that, when you get that instruction, now the devil really loses. It's no game now. You're about to destroy the adversary because you're going to another level of instruction. You're going to the next level in your instruction. And this is what Paul has been assigned to do for the church of the Hebrews. He is assigned by God to give them a deeper level of instruction so that they would know what to do when they are persecuted for the truth. Amen. If you're getting this, amen, type in the box, I'm getting this. I understand. Praise God. I understand. All right. So now, the mysteries are given to disciples. They're not given to people that will not listen to instruction. Are you listening right now? Being able, being able to be pastored, amen, is one of the greatest things that you can ever have. A coachable spirit, a teachable spirit, a spirit that what? Lives and drinks instruction. Can somebody say amen? And Paul is called by God to step on the scene and what? Provide instruction, provide instruction. Beloved, we are in a kingdom. Can somebody say amen? We're in a kingdom. And one thing about a kingdom is it's ordered. It has to be extremely ordered. My life got to fall in order. My life has to fall in order. It got to make sense. My life got to make sense. My life got to make sense. My life has to make sense, people of God. If it's not making sense, I got to go back into the word of God and say, Holy Ghost, lead me to the word that will give me the sense of this matter. Make sense of this word. Can somebody say amen? When David, amen, was bringing the Ark of the Covenant in, the man fell down dead and fear went throughout the camp. David had to find out why. Why? Because it's not supposed to happen like this. It's not supposed to happen like this. We're supposed to be celebrating. We're supposed to be, my God, praising the Lord. Glory to God. But instead, we're planning for a funeral. And guess what God said? You did not follow the order. You did not do it after its due order. Instruction. Somebody put in the box, I need instruction. I need instruction. Amen? Because we're in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a government that is completely submitted to the will of God. 
completely submitted to the will and the authority of God. The authority of God. You know one of the definitions for righteousness is surrendering, surrendering your right to your life. When you say, yeah, I got a right to be respected. I got a right to be heard. I got a right to be loved. I got a right to be treated fairly. I got my rights. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to protect those rights. So you're always going to be in a fight. I got a right to do this. I got a right to speak my mind. I got a right. 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 In the kingdom of God, your rights become second. Amen. In the kingdom of God, your rights, praise God, are secondary because the kingdom is number one. Uh-oh. This is why the Beatitudes are so powerful because he's telling you, you got the right. Amen. It says, blessed are those, he said, bless those that curse you. You got the right to defend yourself, but in the kingdom, you bless them that curse you. Glory to God. Come on now. You bless them that talk ill about you. You don't return the favor. So you can't stand up for your rights in the kingdom of God and consider yourself to be righteous. Can somebody say amen? You what? Relinquish the rights to your life, to God, to a higher authority. Say, God, Whatever you want to do with my life, just do it. Praise God. I trust you. Glory to God. I don't have the right to defend myself. I don't have the right to speak up for myself. Y'all say amen. Praise God. Come on. I ain't got, I'm losing everybody. I can feel y'all dropping off because the Beatitudes is saying this is how your attitude should be. Blessed are the peacemakers. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness sakes. Amen. But we are so in defense mode. We defend our right. We defend. We don't want nobody talking about us. We don't want nobody what uh, tripping on us. We don't want nobody hating on us. And guess what, y'all? When we do that, we are stepping out of the righteousness of God and into righteousness of self. Amen. But in the kingdom, the righteousness of God is the primary thing. Amen. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You understand that type of box? I understand. I got it. Amen. So now, which class are you in? Amen. Are you with the people that get it or the people that don't get it? So describe. Let's describe the type of individual that does not receive the mystery of the kingdom. Number one, they don't receive it because they already rejected him. See, I can be in church, y'all. Praise God. We can be in church forever. We can be in church forever, and guess what? In our heart, we're not going to receive everything. I can dance, I can shout, I can praise God, but if a part of the gospel, I'm already in defense mode, I am not going to receive that truth. I'm not going to receive truth. Praise God. So now I hear him, I see him, praise God, I see what he's doing for somebody else. I see what he's doing for that family. I hear what the man or the woman of God is preaching, but I'm already in defense mode. I'm already going to defend my own thinking. I'm, all, I'm waiting for the punchline. I'm really not fully open to receive it. And that's why God says, I can't give you more. He said to whoever has it, they're going to receive more. I cannot give you more because your posture, you're already offended. You're already in a posture of what? Defending yourself from the hurt, defending yourself from something. And that's why God says only a portion can go to you. But those who don't care, glory to God, like you, I don't care what's going on. I'm, I'm with Christ. God said, I'm going to give you more truth. I'm going to give you more truth. Amen. I'm going to expand your truth because you're not allowing your afflictions to put you in defense mode. You are not allowing what you are suffering, praise God, to change your reception of the gospel. It's very important that you understand this, that afflictions can change your mindset towards God. Come on here. Affliction, persecution, trials. The Bible says when hope is deferred, it can make your heart sick. If you have suffered, uh, praise God, some of the worst things you can ever suffer. Can somebody say amen? It will literally bother your mind. Amen. It'll make you feel like God is against you. 
and God, my God, everything is going right for everybody else but me. That's what Naomi said. Don't call me Naomi no more because the Lord have dealt bitterly with me. That's one of the things that happen when affliction is prolonged, especially if you don't understand why you're going through. And this is what's happening here in the book of Hebrews. But Paul is charged to give these people a deeper understanding of God. Because when you understand it, it might not change the persecution, but it changes your response to the persecution. Amen. Praise God. Recently, amen, I was going through something, uh, praise God, in the month of July, and I just sat at the, the kitchen counter. I said, now, God, you promised. Amen. Amen. I was going through things. I said, you know, you, you said all the promises of God in you are yes and amen. So I started looking up the promises of God. I started looking up the promises of God. Amen. And I begin to notice, I begin to notice things in the word of God. Amen. That God is in absolute control and he is in charge. Come on, somebody. And God knows what is best for you. Amen. So sometimes he will give you something different than what he would give sister so-and-so. He will give you something different than brother so-and-so. Brother so-and-so might have this. You might have that. She might have that. But it's all good because it all comes from God. Now, God gives us things according to our ability to handle them. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when we accept that part of God's sovereignty, It'll get us out of being critical of other people's blessings. Amen. That God said, then he gave me a scripture. You know, God deals like that. He gave me a scripture. He said, go to the book of Romans, the ninth chapter. And you'll see, I said, I will have mercy upon whom I'm going to have mercy upon. Amen. I'm going to have compassion upon whom I'm going to have compassion upon. In other words, I'm going to do the things that I want to do because I know more than you. I know you can't handle that right now. Praise God. Then I thought, is my suffering really suffering or am I being denied what I want? Amen. That's what you got to ask yourself when you uh, when you're growing up in the spirit. You got to ask yourself, is it really persecution? Am I really going through hell? Am I really suffering? Am I really going through an affliction? Am I going through a tribulation or am I being denied what I want? And then I make, amen, then I use the scripture, praise God, to try to what? Handcuff God into giving me what I want. You, that's what it means. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he all. We can't make God look ridiculous. We can't force God to do something that's not in his will for your life. Jesus, he didn't want to suffer. He said, if it be possible, come on here, let this cup pass from me. Amen. Some things are not going to pass unless you drink it because in the drinking is the lesson. In the going through is the lesson. So God has to do something before you backslide or before you leave God. He has to interrupt the process by sending a word, glory to God, that will reveal to you, amen, what God is up to. You get that understanding and you're able to tell the devil I don't care what God put up on me. I don't care what you do. I don't care how much hell I'm going to go through. I'm not leaving God. Amen. So I had to get myself together. I said, now, am I really going through or am I being denied what I want? I can't answer that question for you, but I answered that my own question. Because I begin to look at the suffering of the saints. And I begin to say, man, they really suffered. Glory to God. They had their head cut off. They were sawn asunder for this truth. They were put in prisons often. My God, they was running for their life constantly. Then I look at what I said, God, now am I really going through, glory to God, or am I being denied what I want? I don't want to be spoiled in the kingdom of God. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. And then when God began to give me understanding and instruct me, my God, my whole emotional realm changed. Huh? And I begin to say, maybe you didn't want me to have that because I can't handle it. Can somebody say amen? If you be faithful over this little, then I will make you ruler over much. 
Sometimes we're trying to jump to the much without really appreciating and mastering the little. I mean master it. Glory to God. Bring it to a point of perfection. Bring order to that little. God is looking at that. How do you handle the $500? How do you handle the $500? Do you give your tithe with joy? Do you give your offering with joy? Do you pay your bills on time and then please yourself? Are you handling business first with the money that I gave you? Instead of praying for more money, master the money that you have. Master what you got. And when God sees that you are putting yourself last, come on, then he can make you first. Huh? Because the last shall be first. But if you first, because you got paid, I'm going to go have some fun. Baby, I've been through hell. I'm going to go buy me some shoes. I'm going to go buy me this. I'm going to go buy me that. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to eat that. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Then God says you broke the law because I'm first. Huh? You broke the law. Now the money that you do have, hey, guy, I'm going to blow on it. Why? To get your attention that I'm not first on the agenda. Amen. Serving God, you got to put yourself last. Serving God, you're not going to be the first one in line. Hallelujah. Promotion only comes from God after I activate these principles of being faithful. Of being faithful. Glory to God. Can somebody say amen? I need somebody to shout out there. Lord, instruct me. Teach me. Teach me your ways. Teach me. And another thing. God says, I am watching how you serve me. I'm watching everything about you. <laughs> I said, God, you got to help me. So after I answered that question for myself, amen, God just gave me the evidence. I had to say the truth. I said, God, I get it now. Praise God that you know what is best for me. But because my mind has not been transformed, I can't discern it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye what, y'all? Transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may be able to prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. That means my discernment of God's will is based on the condition of my mind. That means I cannot see what God wants for me Versus what the world wants for me. Y'all ain't saying that. Or what I want for myself. I got to be able to decide accurately. Spiritually. Praise God. I know I'm able to have that, that, that in the flesh. But what does God want me to have? Come on now. God is more concerned about us making the right decisions. My decision making has to be always to bless the Lord. What did Job say? The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. So what class are you in? Are you in those that get it or those that don't? Paul is making a house call to the Hebrews to make sure that they get it. Don't backslide. Why? Something better is coming. Ha. Uh -uh. Glory to God, I feel God. Amen. Don't give up right now. You done made too much progress. You done made too much progress. You done overcome, praise God, some things that people didn't even know that you were going through. Now, all of a sudden, your emotional realm is stronger than your intellect. Your emotional realm is stronger. Glory to God. Then the logic, it don't make sense. But your emotions are strong. So now you need God to give you some understanding. Can somebody say, do it, Lord? Amen. All right. So Matthew 13, 52, it says, Then said he unto them, therefore, every scribe, this is Matthew 13 and 52, put that in the box. Then he said unto them, therefore, every scribe which is instructed into the kingdom of heaven, Amen. Instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder or a master of the house, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. I'm about to shout right now. Glory to God. Why? 
Because you started off Matthew 10 as a disciple. Matthew 10, the disciples came to him. And Jesus taught them about the parable of the sower, the parable of the householder, the parable of this, the parable of that, the parable of that. And then the last parable, my God, you done went from a disciple to being a scribe and a householder. Instruction takes you into another level with God. They sat there and they were instructed by Jesus Christ. And at the end of the instruction, Jesus said, now you ain't no disciple no more. You are a householder. Come on here. You done got promoted just from listening to me teach. <laughs> Glory to God. You done went to another level and don't even know you in another level. Why? Because you received the instruction. Glory to God. Amen. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Every time you sit by an anointed man or an anointed woman of God and you close your mouth because it's more blessed to just listen than to speak. Praise God. It says be swift to hear, slow to speak. Got two ears so we can hear twice as much as we say. <laughs> Glory to God. You get a promotion just from listening to instruction. Now, listen to what Jesus said. Then he said unto them, therefore, every scribe, you're not a disciple anymore. You're a scribe now, which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is just like a man that is a householder. Come on, y'all. And if you own the house, you can bring out treasures, new and old. Huh? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Instruction gives you something called ambidextrism. You are ambidextrous. You can beat the devil over here and you can whoop the devil over here. When you're ambidextrous, you can do things equally with both hands. Praise God. You can catch with your right, catch with your left, throw with your right, throw with your left, shoot with your right, shoot with your left. What? You can beat them on both sides. Huh? Instruction makes you ambidextrous in the spirit where the devil can't beat you over here and he can't defeat you over there. Why? Because you know what to do. Woo. <laughs> Glory to God. You know what to do. You know what to say. You know how to act. You know how to respond. Why? Glory to God because you done got instruction. You done got instruction. He has instructed you into another realm with God. This is why we need instruction. Instruction elevates you into a deeper status within the kingdom. I love shouting, dancing. Y'all know me. I'm going to holler. I'm going to scream. I'm going to dance. I'm going to roll on the floor. Y'all been in church with me. Glory to God. But y'all also know I have a thirst. I have a thirst for knowledge. Huh? And it is the revelation of your word. That takes us into another realm with God. Glory to God. So those who love truth. Can somebody read after me say I love the truth. I love the truth. The truth is the hottest commodity in the kingdom of God. If you want to go to the next level. Go after truth. I mean reckless abandon. Seek God. <laughs> Amen. For revelation knowledge concerning the truth. Now, let me, hear you. Let, me, let me show you what I'm saying. Proverbs 23, 23. Buy the truth. Buy it. Go purchase the truth. This is Proverbs 20, 23, 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Don't sell it when you get it. When you get truth, don't give it up so easily. Am I preaching up in here? You got it? Amen. We are in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God has an economy of grace. The economy of grace. Some theologians call it the economy of grace or the dispensation of grace. The kingdom of God right now has a dispensation of grace. Free unmerited favor. You got access to everything. It is free. Praise God. But in that economy, the most valuable commodity is truth. It's more valuable than anything. Because without the truth, you cannot purchase anything in the kingdom. You need the truth. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Buy the truth and sell it not. 
Here go three other things you got to buy. Also, wisdom. You got to buy wisdom. You got to buy instruction and you got to buy understanding. So what's the four things we're going to purchase? Truth, wisdom, instruction, understanding. Now, what is the purchasing power when it comes to God? Faith. Faith is the currency of God. <laughs> buy truth. How? With your faith. How are you going to purchase wisdom? By faith. How are you going to purchase understanding? By faith. How are you going to purchase, amen, instruction? By faith. Faith gives me access into another realm of truth. And when I get into that other realm of truth, instruction, wisdom, and understanding, guess what? The suffering does not have to stop. I am victorious even while I'm bleeding. Even while I'm being misunderstood, even while I'm being imprisoned, I'm being burnt, I'm being taken for granted, I'm being lied on, even in that current state of affliction that you are in, what makes you a conqueror, glory to God, is not when the suffering stops, amen, it's your praise, it's your validation of God, it's your glorifying of God, wow tears running down your face and you hold up your hands and say I'm not backsliding I don't care what come my way can somebody say amen come on y'all put in that box I'm not backsliding I'm not going back the importance of truth is so important when a man lights a candle he don't cover it up amen the importance of truth is when you get this revelation knowledge of truth, amen, the Bible said that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Now, when that candle is lit, that means you don't got a revelation of truth. Amen. Your spirit has to become enlightened or illuminated by truth. When that happens, other people can see God. So why is you getting the truth so important? Because when people see you praising God up under your pressure, glory to God, they're going to say, I can do it too. Amen. I saw this young man come through a divorce and he ain't missed church. My, he ain't missed a beat. He praising God. He's serving. Glory to God. Now he came all the way out. Now that man's victory is a testimony for yours. It's a witness for yours. Come on here. We are what? Compassed about with such a greater cloud of witnesses. They saying this, if I went through this, glory to God, and I got the victory, hey amen, you can do it too. This is why the devil don't want you to come out. Hey amen. It proves that he's a loser. Hey amen. It proves that he's a loser. But God got something better for you. <laughs> God got something better for you. I'm telling you right now, few more days. Hallelujah. You're going to feel the strength of God like you have never felt the strength of God before. Because God just can't snatch you out until you get the victory while you are in. It's not victory if God pulls you out and you're still afraid of that devil. You got to get the victory before the lion leaves the den. Before the lion leaves the den, you got to make sure that you stay in the den and watch God shut its mouth. It's not a victory if the lion is roaring and you trying to get out screaming. That is not victory. Victory is, praise God, going in emotionally stable. Huh? Going through it emotionally stable. And then coming out emotionally stable. Going in with an assurance that if this lion bite and devour me i'm going to a better place when you get to the behind you when you get to that place it don't matter what happens here on earth glory to god can somebody say amen amen all right praise god He's like a householder so paul has a task the task is i gotta get these people back in faith <laughs> And the only way I can get them back in faith, instruction. Huh? Because by faith we understand. So I got to increase their faith. 
by giving them an understanding. I got to show them why, amen, Jesus is greater than anything they ever had. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. So if you go through enough, suffering will bother your belief system. If you go through enough, suffering will try to change what you believe. And this is what's happening here in the book of Hebrews. They are suffering so much that they begin to what? Change what they believe. Because it is what they believe that got them in trouble. Do you know Satan mad at you because you believe in something? So he's trying to snatch you off of what you believe. Amen. So now if you go through enough, it'll bother your soul. Suffering will bother your soul if you're going through severely enough and it's intense. It'll bother your emotional realm. It'll bother your desires and your appetites. Your appetites start to change because you just don't want to suffer anymore. Amen. And guess what that suffering does? It sends a message to your spirit, which is your mind. And your mind is communicating, amen, with your, with your feelings. Your spirit is communicating with your soul. Your mind, your intellect saying, this don't make no sense. This don't make no sense. This not logical. I'm tired of this. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. And your soul is saying, yes, I'm frustrated. Praise God. I'm mad. I'm angry. All of those are emotions. And your soul is communicating with your spirit. Now they're in agreement. It don't make sense. The soul says, yep, I'm not getting what I want. I'm not getting what I desire. So the only thing left, mind, your, your emotions talk to your mind. Make a decision. Make a decision. So the mind makes a decision to satisfy the soul. The mind makes a decision to get out of this. Let me find something, praise God, that is the least, the least pathway of resistance. I got to get out of this. So my mind, my intelligence, praise God, is really submitting to my feelings. <laughs> so God says, I got to interrupt this process. I got to stop them from talking to each other. I got to shut the spirit up and I got to shut the soul up. God, how are you going to do that? I'm going to send a preacher that's going to interrupt this conversation and remind your spirit of what thus saith the Lord. Huh? Glory to God. I'm going to send. See, your salvation begins. Amen. Your, the process of you being delivered, it don't start with you. It starts with God. Romans 10, 13 says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? So God said, I got to send a preacher to interrupt the spirit telling the soul and the soul telling the spirit, let's find another way out. Let's find another way out. Hallelujah. Let's find a door to get out of this. Let's find the exit sign. We ain't got to suffer this. God didn't call you to suffer all this. But wait. The preacher is coming. God is sending the preacher to interrupt the spirit talking to the soul and the soul talking to the spirit. How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? God sends the preacher because he hears your conversation. He hears you saying, I'm about to go back. He hears you saying, I'm about, this ain't working. I'm tired of all this. I'm about to go back. I'm about to find, I'm about to pick up. I'm about to do something else. I'm about to go out, party. I'm about to kick it. I'm about to do this. Why? Because I'm just tired of this suffering. Can somebody say Amen. <laughs> And God said, before you go, listen to this preacher right here. Huh? And then Paul begins to pick it up. And he says, God, who had sundry times, I want to talk to you because you're backsliding. <laughs> you're about to go back to your old ways of worship. You're about to go back to what you used to do. You're about to go back to the thing that you mastered. 
You about to go back, but before you go back, listen to this sermon I got right here. The Lord gave me a message. Huh? And what is he saying in that message? Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto what? Perfection. I got something to say. What you got to say, Paul? Now, faith is the substance of things. We are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but we are of them that believe to the what? Saving of the soul. Paul started teaching them. Glory to God. You got something better coming. Jesus is better. He begins to say, he's better than the prophets. Glory to God. I got to retrain your mind because, my God, you going back to your old system of worship. Huh? And that old system of worship cannot produce the deliverance that you already got. Huh? So they believed in the prophets. So he got to say, I'm going to show you, you got something better than the prophets. Christ is better than the prophets. Huh? Glory to God. Amen. My time is gone. Amen. We're going to pick up right from there. We're going to start showing you how uh, Paul went through everything that they believed in Judaism. They believed in the prophets, they believed in the angels, they believed in Moses, they believed in Joshua, they believed in the high priest, Melchizedek, Abraham, Aaron, the earthly priest, the Old Testament sacrifices, and the Old Testament heroes. They even esteemed their parents and their grandparents. This is their belief system. Amen. But they was about to leave that. They was about to leave Christ and go all the way back. But God interrupted their conversation by sending them a preacher. Amen. I want you to be encouraged. Amen. I hope that lifted your spirits to let you know that you're suffering because of who you believe in. And if you endure the persecution, if you endure what you're in right now, the reward is going to be greater than the pain. Did you hear me? The reward is going to be greater than the pain. So my encouragement to you is... Allow God to show you something. Don't close your ear. Amen. Don't harden your heart. Let him speak to you. Don't get in your emotions. Amen. And just be mad and be angry and be upset and be frustrated. Don't throw in the towel because you're not seeing what you want yet. It's a process. Amen. It's a process. And we're going to take you through the book of Hebrews. Amen. If the Lord say the same, man, show you, you got something better on the way. In Jesus name. Amen. Father, we thank you right now for our time. We ask you to bless those that heard the word of the Lord. Give us a keen understanding of what you desire from us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Now, if you don't know the Lord, amen, please, we're in the last days. We're in the last days. This thing is wrapping up and winding up. Amen. And you need a personal relationship with him. If you died right now and you're not sure about where you would spend eternity, if you're not sure, I need you to lift your hands up right now. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, deliver me. Save me from all of my sins. Forgive me for my transgressions and my trespasses. Purge me with his up. And I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. Deliver me. And fill me with the Holy Ghost. I believe in Jesus. I believe he's the Lord. He's the Savior. He's our master. And I worship him. <laughs> in truth. Save me. And keep me. In Jesus' name. Now, if you believe that prayer, find you a Bible teaching church. Welcome to the kingdom of God and stand on the sure mercies of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Have a wonderful night.